Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Not entirely sure which one it is for you watching this at the moment, but there's loads of movies currently out in the cinemas, Free Guy, Jungle Cruise, Suicide Squad, and whilst I could have done a review today on one of those movies, I've already done one on Suicide Squad, actually, you should check it down below. I thought it'd be better to maybe talk about what we can look forward to in the future now, moving into autumn and winter. And that's why I'm gonna do my best movies you can look forward to this winter 2021 video I can. First up on our list is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is our second film in Phase 4 that's come out this year. We've currently had some well-received TV shows that have come out on Disney Plus and What If is on at the moment. I'm just hoping that for this new origin story for a superhero, we get a nice healthy mix of maybe that Asian culture or that martial arts style fighting that we've seen in Jackie Chan films and Jet Li to make this a bit more of a unique origin story. Otherwise, this could look to be pretty generic. This will be dropping in cinemas on September the 3rd. Second up is the next installment to the James Bond franchise, No Time to Die. After being delayed for almost two years, this looks to be the final installment of the Daniel Craig series. And we have Rami Malek coming into this movie as the new Bond villain, which I think will be really exciting. I love watching him on screen. And we have this weird system of each Bond movie oscillating in terms of quality and reception where the first one was really good and you had Quantum of Solace which wasn't, Skyfall was good, Spectre wasn't, so in theory, you know, we should be back up there again. No Time to Die is coming out to cinemas on September the 30th. Moving down the calendar, we have Venom Let There Be Carnage. This is a sequel to the Tom Hardy Venom that we saw a few years back and it was okay. I didn't hate it but I was hoping to see a bit more from it if I'm honest. This one's chucking in Woody Harrelson playing the infamous villain from Spider-Man, Carnage. And I think that could be really exciting. I do have surprisingly big expectations for this film, although I know I probably shouldn't. But we'll find out when this drops on October the 15th. Next up, we have Dune, a glorious sci-fi adventure brought to us by the director Denis Villeneuve, who's given us Arrival, Sicario, and Blade Runner 2049. He's paired up with this great cast as well, which is Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya, Oscar Isaac, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin. So hopefully we're gonna get this really unique tale combined with some great visuals and great performances. Dune is dropping on October the 21st. We then have Jackass Forever. It's been 10 or so years since the last Jackass movie and they've all come back together to give us this one final showdown. Well, most of them are back at least. It's just a movie about a bunch of idiots doing gross and deadly entertaining stuff. And it's always had a soft place in my heart ever since I was a little kid. Jackass Forever is dropping up October the 22nd and I'm really looking forward to it. Moving to the end of October, we have The Last Night in Soho, a mystery horror movie about a girl with this sixth sense that can go back in time to the 1960s, taking over the body of her idol singer. And while it sounds like a really generic plot, it's being directed by Edgar Wright, who gave us the Cornetto trilogy, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and Baby Driver. Edgar Wright is one of the most stylistic and creative directors out there at the moment, and I really can't wait to see his spin on doing a proper horror movie. I know Shaun and the Dead was a horror movie, but that was more of a comedy at the same time. Last Night in Soho is dropping in cinemas on October the 29th. We then get our third MCU movie of 2021, which is Eternals. I don't really know much about these characters, but the cast looks absolutely fantastic and the trailers seem really impressive so far. You've got Selma Hayek, Richard Madden, Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan, Kit Harington. It's a really impressive cast. But yeah, Eternals is dropping in cinemas on November the 5th. Following that, we're getting Ghostbusters Afterlife a far off sequel to the original Ghostbuster movies where we follow these kids who've moved to a new town to slowly discover that connection that they have to the Ghostbuster legacies that their grandparents left behind. You've got Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things as well as Paul Rudd as a new character and we're also getting the original cast coming back too with the exception of the late Harold Ramis unfortunately. Following that we have Top Gun Maverick which is another movie which has been delayed by over two years. The OG Top Gun is undoubtedly a classic despite what your opinions are on Tom Cruise. He's joined by Val Kilmer, Miles Teller. Top Gun Maverick is coming to cinemas on November the 19th. Coming out on the same day is King Richard, a biopic film about Richard Williams, the father of Serena and Venus Williams. It's about how this man did everything he could in order to make his daughters the tennis giants they are today. He's played by Will Smith and if you've seen The Pursuit of Happiness or Concussion, 
then you know he's really good at diving into these small-scale biopic films. It's also not a sequel, prequel, or reboot, and that's actually just really refreshing to watch. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it's coming out on the same day on November the 19th. Not far afterwards is Encanto, or Enchanto, I'm still not quite sure how to pronounce it. This is our latest movie from the Disney Animation Studios that brought us Moana and Tangled. However, I'm not quite sure if this one's a musical or not. It seems to be this colourful explosion about a story of this magical family in Colombia. And while I don't think it's a musical, I do know that they're going to be representing Colombian music, similarly to how they've done it in Coco and Luca, and it'll be really exciting to hear these great scores representing their culture. This is easily going to be a great one to go take your kids to or to download on Disney Plus, and is coming out on November the 29th. Following that, we have Spider-Man No Way Home. This is the fourth and final MCU film coming out in 2021. And boy, it is a big one. This is arguably the movie that I'm looking forward to most this year, but it might be because I just saw the trailer that dropped this week. We see Peter Parker teaming up with Doctor Strange to solve the issue of his identity being revealed whilst being interfered with villains and characters from different dimensions. Honestly, this just looks so hype, and if you can get away with not watching any trailers until the movie comes out in December, I would recommend doing so, because this is going to be absolutely packed with surprises. This one's coming out on December the 17th, and I actually cannot wait. Another movie which has been heavily delayed is The Kingsman, a prequel to the first two Kingsman spy movies that we've seen, which were really great fun. We're winding back the clock to World War One with Ralph Yannis, Gemma Arterton, Jaiman Honsu, and hopefully it's going to be as fun as the previous films, but minus those really over-the-top gadgets that we were starting to see, making it a bit more grounded. Kingsman's dropping in cinemas sometime December this year. And I was going to maybe talk about the fourth Matrix movie, however, we've not had any announcements of titles, footage, images, we've not had any updates at all, so my guess is that this one's probably going to get pushed back to 2022. But yeah, that is it. That is my extensive list of things that are coming out this year that you can still be excited for. If you liked this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me out. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime, and video games. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.